So let's start with John Hilton. Come on over here, John. John told us that the group has been pooling their money now for a couple of years. John, what's the deal? Well, about for about three or four years now, we've been doing this. Every time one of the jackpots usually gets above 100 million, we go around to our coworkers in our office and ask them if they want to get in. And you know, usually we all throw in two bucks each drawing, and somebody takes the ticket down to Colson's newsroom and buys a ticket. And buys a ticket, and we've never won before. <laughs> So, John, I hear you are pretty methodical about keeping track of who's in and who's out for each drawing. Yes, we do. We, we, have, a, we have a list that we have every time we have a drawing, and if you get in, we mark in. If, you're, if you don't get in, we just put a line through your name, and you're out. I hear you. Thank you. Good luck. All right, next up, come on over here, Tracy. Tracy, who you buy and who flies? You buy and who buys the tickets for the group? Oh. John Cutie's usually the buyer, but we take turns every once in a while to spread it around. And whose turn was it this time to buy for the group? It was Mike Barth's turn. It was Mike Barth's turn. Thank you, Tracy. Mike Barth, come on over here. Where are you? Come on over here. Now, what an interesting story Mike has. <laughs> Let's hear about the fickle finger of fate. Uh, I went down around 2.40 in the afternoon to buy the ticket, and there was a lot of, where's Steve? There was a lot of people down there scurrying around, frantically buying the tickets at the last minute. And so I'm lined up, and there's about two or three people in front of me, <clears throat> and they have a candy bar right there. And uh, I like the Snickers Dark. You know, it's one of my weaknesses. And I'm looking at that, and I'm going, i got to have one of those. So I reach over, you know, and I'm sort of like pulling myself out of the line to get the candy bar. This guy jumps in front of me. And I'm like, maybe I should say something. It was pretty rude. But I did. I was behaving myself. And uh, so that guy, I'm thinking later on, after all this went down, I wonder if that guy would have won the ticket instead of me. So I don't know. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> now, um, Mike, what did you do? Tell us about where the ticket was. What did you do with the ticket when you got back to the office, when you purchased the actual ticket? Um, like John said, we had a list, so I made a quick list of you know who was in and who was out, and and got an envelope and uh, and uh, we make we make a Xerox copy and everybody gets a copy so they can take it home and and throw it out and try and find it later, <laughs> and uh, and just put it in an envelope in my top drawer and you know forgot about it and then probably you'd sit there and three weeks later I'd throw it out. Okay. Where were you over the weekend when? I was in Buffalo. You were in Buffalo. Right. Okay. Doing. Uh, I was taking my son on a college uh, open house. Okay, so you were out of town. Yeah, out of town, and, and uh, I was at my sister's house, and she goes, you know, your cell phone's been ringing. We got up real early. She goes, your cell phone's been ringing, ringing. I go, oh, that means one of the servers broke. And I, you know, so, but, it, but usually it was, and she goes, and I look at it, and look at the voicemail, and it's Lon. I'm going, if it's Lon, he, he monitors our servers. He's in charge of the hardware in, in, our, in the server group. And I'm going, oh, no, no, oh, a, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to ask him to go in again. So um, I call him back around 7 o'clock, and I go, Lon, what is it? What, you, you know, is it broken again? You know. Well, hold that thought. I'm going to come right back to you. Hold on. I want to, I'm kind of giving you a timeline. Come on over here, Gabrielle. Gabrielle, I understand that you were the first in the group to realize that you and your coworkers were $319 million richer. Can you tell us about that? Sure. I was home watching television with my boyfriend. We were watching the 11 o'clock news, and when the numbers came up, I wrote them down, and then I looked at my photocopy, I checked the ticket, and I rechecked it, and I rechecked it, and rechecked it, and just couldn't believe it was real. And where did you have your copy of the ticket? Well, I had it with me at the time, but that morning I had to get it out of my recycle bin because I thought the drawing was the night before and we just didn't win. <laughs> So, okay, so you, you have this copy of the ticket. You realize that you have the winning ticket. What did you do next? Who did you call? I called one of my best friends, John, first, um, shared the news with him, and then I called my mother. And um, I was just so overly excited, and she asked who I could call if I had any of these people's numbers. And I said, I only have my boss's phone number, Kristen, um, but I didn't want to wake her up. <laughs> but, did you call, but, but did you call her? I did, I did. My mom said, you have to call her, Gabrielle. It's the Mega Millions. So um, I, I did call Kristen, and she didn't answer. And I said, I hope you were in the pool this week, because I think we won the Mega Millions. <laughs> thank, thank you. Hold on a second. Thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs> real, real quick, are you married? Not yet. Not yet. 
I need Kristen. Come on over here, Kristen. So, Gabrielle tells you that you hit it big time. You got a phone call in the middle of the night. Did you answer it? When did you hear the message? What were you thinking? I didn't answer the phone. And about midnight, I got up and saw that I had a message. And I listened to it right away. And it was Gabrielle saying, I think we hit. I hope you're in it. And then I frantically started looking for my copy, which was in the car in my gym bag. <laughs> and I came back, got onto my computer, and just looked at the numbers and looked at them and looked at them. And I'm like, is this for real? <laughs> and, and it was. And it was. Yes. And then I, my husband got up, and he's like, I'm like, check this. I think I'm imagining. And, it was for real. It was for real. It is for real. Thanks, Kristen. Now, we're getting down to the last two members of the group, John QT and Leon Peck. So, John, you got a very special assignment. Tell us about that. So, I um, just met my wife for lunch, or for, for breakfast at uh, Denny's. I'm driving down the highway because I'm going to do our grocery shopping for Monday because the crowds are low in the, right in the morning. So the phone rings, and I look, I go, hello? And he goes, John, it's Lon Peck. I go, great, server's down. <laughs> it's the only time the guy would call me. And he goes, Gabrielle just called me. I go, well, what she got to do with servers? Okay, he goes, she said we hit the big one. I go, the big one what? <laughs> he goes, we hit the big one, the mega. I go, yeah, all right, sure. He goes, he goes check your tickets. I go, I was out Friday, the, uh, my copy's on my desk. He goes, well, can you drive in? I go, yeah, head right down now. So. Went to the office and got my phone out and got the tickets out and I'm looking at the numbers and looking at the numbers and looking at the numbers and <laughs> so, so I, I'm I, looking for Lon's phone number. I find it and I, I get my try to dial. I push on the numbers real slow, you know, and I call Lon. We had the numbers. <laughs> what do I do? So I left there. I went over the Colsons. I just grabbed the newspaper because it was early and. Uh, I just grabbed the newspaper, threw it up in the counter, and uh, Steve was there, and I said, anybody hit the mega? Just didn't want to attract any attention. And he goes, he's holding a little ticket, and he says, yeah. He says, they're telling me it was here. And, and I, then I just left. <laughs> I can only imagine. And Leon, 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 come on over this way, right here. The last illustrious member of my Albany, our Albany Seven. Um, you, you, there, you all are set to receive your share of the $319 million jackpot. What was your reaction to hearing the news? Well, at 6.45, uh, the phone rang, and I'm still in bed. It's Saturday morning, and I'm thinking, now, yeah, who could this be? And uh, I answer the phone, and it's Gabrielle. She says, Lon, it's Gabrielle. I said, oh, no, we got to go to work. What's, <laughs> you know, what, what's going on, Gabrielle? What's the problem? And she says, we hit the mega. I said, what? And she says, we hit the mega millions. And there was only one ticket sold. And I think, well, OK, that's nice. You know, and I, because I'm thinking, this is not real. I'm, I'm still dreaming. Uh, I, it, you know, I've got to verify this. And she says, I don't have Mike Barr's number. He's got the ticket. And I, I can you call him? Do you have his number? I says, yeah. And so I, I called Mike. I knew he'd been out in Buffalo with his son and uh, tried several times to call him. As, uh, he didn't answer the phone. I'm thinking, well, I'll have to wait. Uh, meanwhile, I called John Cutie. And I said, got John on the phone. And I, he's driving on the north way. He says, well, I'll go down. I'll check it out. I said, I don't have my numbers. I have my copy of the numbers. So, you know, he says, well, I don't have mine either. He said, but I said, well, I've got a copy on my desk. Go get them and, and check it and let me know. So John goes in, and uh, about 15 minutes or so later, I get a call, phone call. It's John. He says, my hands are shaking. <laughs> he, he says, I'm looking at him. He says, we've got it. I said, holy cow. Now I've got verification. And Gabrielle's not the kind of person to kid and not the person, kind of person to lie, but this kind of news, you know, you, you need verification. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. All right, so John, come on over here, John Hilton. I got one last question for you. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Now, I heard that you hid the actual winning ticket, not a copy, but the actual ticket in a very ingenious place. Can you tell us all where you hid the ticket. Well, what happened was Lon had called me because we just found out we thought Mike had the ticket with him. Well, he had it in his desk drawer. 
So um, they says, you're closest, will you go get it? So I said, okay. So I gathered up one of my boys. I said, come on, I need to go to work. He goes, why am I going to work with you on Saturday? He goes, I need a bodyguard. <laughs> uh, and so we, uh, I went into work and got the ticket, took it home, and I said, what am I going to do with it now? So the only thing, I'm frantic now, what I did was I put it in two Ziploc bags, put it in a five-gallon bucket of bird food I had in the garage and hid it in my basement. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do with it. So... When you all met at Kristen's house on Sunday, did you bring the ticket or just the bucket? I mean, did you bring the bucket or just the ticket? I brought the ticket in the bucket. <laughs> and, then, and then the sad part was, after, the, after Kristen took the ticket out, I still haven't got my bird food back. 